Hello, this webinar is a part of a multi-part series, A Country Built to Last, and we focus on this video with the author's remarks on the founding period. And I wanted to take an excerpt from the book before we got too far along because they had some profound insight about America's founding. Firstly, we're asking you to see the success of visionary companies as coming from underlying processes and fundamental dynamics embedded in the organizational DNA, and not primarily the result of a single great idea or some great, all-knowing, godlike visionary who made great decisions, had great charisma, and led with a great deal of authority. No, we are asking you to think less in terms of being a brilliant product visionary or seeking the personality characteristics of charismatic leadership and to think more in terms of being an organizational visionary and building the characteristics of a visionary company. Indeed, we are asking you to consider a shift in thinking analogous to the shift required to found the United States in the 1700s. And here's some profound insight. Prior to the dramatic revolutions in political thought of the 17th and 18th centuries, the prosperity of a European kingdom or country depended in large part on the quality of the king or queen. If you had a good king, then you had a good kingdom. If the king was a great and wise leader, then the kingdom might prosper as a result. But the corollary was, bad king, bad kingdom. Now compare the good king frame of reference with the approach taken at the founding of the United States. The critical question at the Constitutional Convention in 1787 was not who should be president, who should lead us, who's the wisest among us, who would be the best king. No, the founders of the country concentrated on such questions as what processes can we create that will give us good presidents long after we are dead and gone? What type of enduring country do we want to build? On what principles? How should we operate? What guidelines and mechanisms should we construct that will give us the kind of country we envision? Thomas Jefferson, and James Madison, and John Adams were not charismatic visionary leaders in the it all depends on me mode. No, they were organizational visionaries. They created a constitution which they and all future leaders would be subservient to. They focused on building a country they rejected the good king model. They took an architectural approach. They were clock builders. Clock building meaning they were building something for the future that would last for generations and outlive them versus time telling. Just dealing with the here and now and trying to get by. The authors continue. It's not a cold mechanistic or Darwinian clock. It's a clock based on human ideals and values. It's a clock built on human needs and aspiration. It's a clock with the spirit. Reflecting back on companies and how it takes hard work to build them, this means that you don't have to accept the false view that until your company has a charismatic visionary leader, it cannot become a visionary company. There's no mysterious quality or elusive magic. Indeed, once you learn the essentials, you and all those around you can just get down to the hard work of making your company a visionary company. Well, this means, as you apply it to our country, we don't have to wait for a charismatic president or other national leader. We only need to relearn the essentials, the core values, the core principles, and the purpose of our country. Then we can just get down to the hard work of putting them into practice, and we will have a visionary country, a country built to last. Won't you join me in this effort? My name's Craig Seibert. Thanks for listening.